Well, on November 19th, International Men's Day celebrates worldwide the positive value men bring to the world, their families and communities. We highlight positive role models and raise awareness of men's well-being. Um, men face much higher rates of suicide than any of the other genders. Men face um, incidentally quite high levels of domestic abuse which is an issue that's not very spoken about. Men are much more commonly the victims of death by overdose, especially young men. We are seeing a, a terrible a, a terrible epidemic of death amongst young men in BC from overdose. And uh, when we think about older men, older men face uh, high levels of prostate cancer, and prostate cancer is not researched or funded at anywhere near the rates that analogous cancers for women, such as breast cancer, are funded. So uh, men are under-supported culturally as well as undervalued, and this has a whole range of trickle effects through the culture that affect men's lives in myriad ways. Now this isn't to say that focusing on men should take away from our focus on the need to protect women, not at all. Um, the reality is that when we focus on men's well-being, uh, we don't take away from the equal need to focus on women's well-being. When we make men strong, we also make women strong, just at, like when we make women strong, we make men strong. It's not a zero-sum game to focus on men's well-being. Unfortunately, we live in a culture where men and masculinity is not celebrated, uh, honored, or respected, and we see this in a whole bunch of different areas. And so men in general suffer from the fact that the culture um, persistently devalues men, actually. It's nothing new. We've seen this in the phenomenon of men being rushed off to war as if they're disposable. We've seen it in the phenomenon of um, men working dangerous jobs where their mortality rates are very high. We've seen it in the um, phenomenon of how we treat our veterans when they return from wars we send them to, and our veterans are mostly male. So the widespread cultural devaluation of the positive contributions of men um, affects all men in terms of an internalized um, sense of a lack of value. There's been a notable rise in the number of men in our organization who have faced false allegations of sexual abuse, sexual assault, and child abuse. And these false allegations happen in a legal context in which basic rights that used to be assumed, like the right to due process, the right to basics of procedural fairness, are thrown out the window under the guise of believe the victim no matter what. And so this rise of false allegations amongst men um, affects the men in our organization um, in terrible ways, but it also affects women insofar as um, women, and it is often women who make false allegations against men, um, the rise in false allegations um, takes necessary resources and attention away from um, actual victims of sexual assault, including female victims. So false allegations is a double-edged sword that um, impacts the men who are accused, but also impacts women who are legitimately survivors of sexual assault, um, whose rights to support are often um, denigrated in an environment where um, false allegations are culturally becoming more and more acceptable, actually. CCMF provides a variety of frontline support for men in crisis. This includes weekly peer support group meetings, a comprehensive 13-week program to assist men who are in recovery from domestic abuse, both in the context of intimate partner violence and in the context of um, recovery from childhood abuse. 
We also do um, public advocacy around issues that face men, including issues of false allegations, um, issues of access to family justice. We run a legal clinic where we give free legal information to men navigating the family or criminal law um, systems. And we also uh, run a variety of support groups for survivors of false allegations. And in a more general way, CCMF in both the Vancouver branch and in our branches across the country and CCMF National acts as a voice to celebrate and uphold men and to support men in their desire to become better fathers, better humans, and um, better contributing members to society. So we're, we're a leader in men's advocacy and a leader in the celebration of the many wonderful contributions that men have to make, contributions that are often un under-celebrated in families and in the culture, generally speaking. In a general way, if you want to help build a world where positive masculinity is celebrated, where uh, positive male role models are uh, honored, you can start by honoring and appreciating the good men in your life. You can start by saying thank you for noticing the positive traits that the men in your, in your lives bring to you. I feel this is important for all the genders, but especially also for women. Um, for women to celebrate positive masculinity, for me as a female leader of a men's advocacy organization, is very important. I love men, and I seek to show this by honoring the goodness that the men in my life, both clients, colleagues at CCMF, and my friends and loved ones who are male, bring to my life. So that's the biggest thing. And then at a organizational level, we're always looking for skilled, passionate volunteers to help us in our work of supporting men's well-being and advocating for men. We also are an organization that relies primarily on private donations. So we welcome your financial contributions to help us do our work on behalf of men. And if you're interested in doing that, here's a link that can show you how to, um, how to give to us. And if you're interested in learning more about the organization, I invite you to email me directly. I'm Kristen Lewis, the Executive Director of CCMF Vancouver. Thank you.